We uh, did an event last Friday at the University of Texas San Antonio about the impact of the shale boom on Texas, and Tom Tunstall, who has become to economic impact what Steve Murdoch is to demographics, mm -hmm. um, uh, was on a panel talking about the impact on the economy, and he had done a report in October analyzing the impact of the shale boom on Texas. He said that for 2013, the projected impact on Texas of the Eagleford was $87 billion all in. Mm -hmm. And looking, looking out to 2023, he said it would be $137 billion. Mm -hmm. He had said earlier in the year that the Klein uh, shale, you know well from your part of the world, a $14.5 billion impact on the region, not the whole state, in 2012, and could be as much as $30 billion by 2022. So all of our problems in the state solved, we can all go home. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Is that what it, I mean, because you know, the, the tendency has been to say, well, the shale boom will come to my house and cook my breakfast, and you know, it's just, it's, the, it's this amazing thing, it's gonna solve all of our problems. On this front, at least, it does seem to be the real deal. It's, it, we're moving in the right direction. I yeah. think that when you talk about South Texas, why people, Hispanics are voting, they're not getting, they're getting, seeing jobs, they're seeing reality out of the Eagle Fur. Yeah. It's happened very, very quickly, so much more quickly, I'm sure he said, than, he, than we expected. Well, he keeps having to revise his previous year's economic That's impact right. because they get out at the end of the year and they go, wait a minute, it was more than we, That's right. more than we thought. But I think, you t and the Eagle Fur's amazing to me because what's happened down there, but he talks about the Klein shale, one shale. Remember in the Permian Basin, we have 10 to 14 plays. Right. So it is. We haven't even started. We haven't even started. And the job impact, Mayor Morales was with us on Friday in, uh, in San Antonio, and we talked about the fact that the unemployment rate in Midland right now is the third lowest in the entire country. Right. 2.8%. 2.8%. Um, you know, he, he was talking about having to pay signing bonuses, like David Clyde being drafted by the Rangers out of high school to pitch. He was talking about signing bonuses to people who are coming to work for oil and gas companies, and I was just shaking my head thinking, I can't believe I'm hearing that, but I guess that's right. If you want to work at McDonald's in Midland, Texas, they're paying $15 an hour, and they hope they can keep you. Because they need to compete with? With everybody else. If you right. go to a restaurant in the Permian Basin, about half of it's open because they don't have wait staff for the other half. It's amazing what's going on. And I think, look, you're going to see some economic booms and ups and downs. Yeah. Let me say, I, I get rid of the boom word. I think it's sustained economic growth. Why, why do you get rid of the boom? Is this like a Frank Luntz deal where you're rebranding it so that it doesn't sound so precarious? No, because I think a boom indicates a bust is coming, and I don't think we're going to see a bust. Well, but Chairman, you, you come from a part of the state that knows well not to count your chickens. That's Be, right. You know, I, I drove out to Midland a few months back and with somebody from Midland in the oil business who said to me, you know, there's, there really hasn't been adequate um, infrastructure in, the, in, in Midland for a lot of the people who are working in the oil boom. There are these tented cities, these right. what they call man camps, right, out and around, because people in Midland and in the surrounding area remember what happened the last time when they got all heady and they overbuilt and then the bottom dropped out. It's part of that, but partly I think the growth has, has exceeded what they can keep up with housing wise. So right. good example of the housing market in Midland, Texas, and I think we're seeing it in South Texas too. My parents were lived north of town, yep. kind of north side of town. They w left town for about three weeks vacation, whatever, in April. When they left, a development had started and two houses had been started of 40. When they came back three weeks later, all 40 houses were up or in Had, had building, already been, been was or that were right? being built. So that's how fast people are trying to catch up. Midland's already grown, they think, since the last census, up to 50,000 plus more people. Right. Uh, and they expect to have 200,000 people by the time the next census comes. And that again, the, me the median income in Midland apparently is top or near the top for the entire country. It is. But you could understand why, based on what happened the last time, that people think gravity eventually is going to get is going to catch up with people you. People are always right? nervous, and I think there's going to be dips. But I think right. there, where the opportunity really is going forward is this, and it's a national, international conversation. We're seeing the past three weeks that the sods have decided they're going to control the market again and bring yeah. the prices down. Right. And, and, and while I certainly don't mind paying less than three dollars a gallon for gas, I do think about what is the impact on this sustained economic success. It, it, and, it, and there are 34 states who now have oil and gas, so it's yeah. not just Texas, by the way. Right. It affects everybody. We are, are probably affected maybe less because we've diversified, but we also have more of it. But you go to Ohio, the prices dip, there's no incentive to try to develop there, right? Right. Um, but the infrastructure is always a challenge. That's a good challenge to have. I'd rather have growth and, instead of no economic right. growth. So that's always gonna be a problem. But you look at what the SODs are doing. I think with our friends in Mexico and, and, and Canada, 
we've got a real opportunity with the resources we now have and that we know we had but can right. develop in this country yeah. to be energy independent, but we've got to do one thing and it's a, nas it's a national vote and that's open our oil markets long term. People don't understand that you can export everything but unrefined crude in this country and we're beginning to see some of the repercussions. So oil dropped below 80 this past week right. on the on the Brent, but that meant it was 67 at the wellhead in, in Midland, or the, in the Permian Basin, and that begins to shut wells down. Or at, at some point, that begins to have, have an effect. 